We are living in the neighborhood of a star sun. And sun is not a light bulb. Sun is a hydrogen bomb. Well, of course, everything we do on the Earth and as a human society is affected by our interaction with the sun. Sun is affecting our environment in so many ways. Continuously streaming from the surface of the sun is this magnetized solar wind. And as it rushes past the Earth, it actually interacts with and deforms the Earth's magnetic field. This whole um, research area is grouped under the term space weather. When the sun is very active, it can deposit a large amount of energy in the Earth's upper atmosphere. The uh, atmosphere uh, is a coupled system. Uh, all the atmospheric layers uh, transfer energies back and forth between them. If you want to understand a tiny part here, we have to understand all the interactions which happen in the system formed by Sun, space and Earth. The geometry of the Earth's field, basically, is such that the field lines are converging on the poles. So the polar regions are fantastic places to be because a wide area of the magnetosphere is imaged into a very small area of the ionosphere. And these high latitudes are unique because it's where the energy from the sun is primarily dumped up here, which is why you only get the aurora over the northern and the southern polar regions. For 30 years, ISCAT has been studying the upper atmosphere with powerful radars and antennas in three different countries. We are sending radio waves to the upper atmosphere near Earth space in the scale of 2 million watts of radio power. Sending 2 million watts, we get 10 to power minus 18 watts to our receiver. It's a tiny, tiny fraction of the power we sent up. And in fact, we can measure simultaneously several parameters like the temperature there, the motions, the winds, uh, the densities uh, of uh, particles. But why do we need to make these measurements? You get these huge magnetic storms on the sun, which increase the amount of energy coming into the upper atmosphere. These affect radio communications and uh, GPS signals, satellite signals. There's been problems in the past when huge magnetic storms on the sun have caused power stations over northern Canada to, to completely short out. But you can't predict when a solar storm is going to go off. The more data we can get, then we can hopefully predict these, these more. And, and the equivalent now is obviously we can try and shut these, the satellites down, put them into a protective mode. So predicting space weather will help to keep mobile phones working. But ISCAT can do much more than that. Due to the fact that there are so many satellites and increasing all the time, uh, there is a, a kind of pollution in space. Some people say that space debris itself could be a catastrophe in the sense that the fragments that are already there can begin to collide together creating smaller and smaller fragments and the whole thing might be a cascade process that eventually fills the Earth's environment with small fragments and, and almost denies our access to certain regions of space. The, this radar is uh, one of the uh, most uh, powerful uh, instruments that are able to, able to detect these uh, small objects in the space. Protecting a spacecraft and safeguarding the lives of astronauts is important in itself, of course. But what about the rest of us here on planet Earth? How does ISCAT help us? The climate models in these regions of the world have the biggest uncertainties. By looking at the upper atmosphere, we, we can have maybe a, a ten times better sensitivity to climate change in, in studying parameters up there. The polar regions are extremely important for uh, climate models to have accurate values for predictions far into the future. If we're going to try and do something about the climate change then we have to keep the measurement series going to see whether or not what we're doing is working or not. So the importance of understanding the upper atmosphere is clear. For radio communications, energy supplies, human health, even climate change. And ISCAT is leading the way to improve this knowledge. But what are the limits for the ISCAP facility? 
We don't know basically exactly what's going to happen in a certain location. We can say, like I said, there's energy coming from the sun, but we can't say it will happen at this location or it's going to last for this long. IceGap has been amazingly successful as an international research facility, but the limitations are clear. Our present systems are based on these large parabolic and cylindrical antennas. Those are capable of only pointing in one direction at once, and they move very slowly. So the next stage of development for IceGat will be something truly exceptional. IceGat 3D will allow you to look in multiple directions very, very rapidly. Possible because it, it will be a phased array. But what is astonishing is the scale. If you would think about an antenna field of 100,000 antennas. The largest and most sophisticated radar facility ever built. It's a very ambitious project. In this technological age, this area of space surrounding the Earth is becoming critical to human activity. Understanding those conditions, the space weather, is as important as understanding the weather down here on Earth. What we're doing with IceCat 3D is trying to build one of the key, the world-leading elements in the chain of instruments and facilities that enable us to understand the behaviour of the Earth's environment and predict it. That really is one of the key technological challenges for human society in the 21st century.